Ezra chapter 5. As we left off in the last previous chapter, uh, the adversaries have come. The decree of Artaxerxes has stopped the temple from being built. The work has ceased. We leave off with a, with a clause that only God could add that says another commandment. Like I said, with the laws and the means and all that, once they make a law, you can't reverse it. Then the prophet Haggai. So you need to read about you need to read the prophet Haggai. He's in part of Ezra building the temple. I wonder how many people don't even know what Haggai when I'm when I'm talking about. And Zechariah. So you gotta read his book. Haggai and Zechariah are in the, the frame of Ezra chapter 5. They are prophets that, that go into the land by the, Lord of, by the Lord God and says, guess what? Get back to work. The son of Edo prophesied unto Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel, even unto them. And Haggai has got some wonderful things to say to him. You know, you guys building your houses, you take care of your own. What about me? You bring in money, but you got holes in your pockets. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shatil, and Jeshua, the son of Zadak, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. With them were the prophets of God helping them. Oh, Haggai and Zechariah were also helping. And the other prophets that God sent. They're working. They're doing. At the same time came to them Tatnai, governor on this side of the river, that's the Euphrates River, Chef Bonzanai, and their companions. And they said thus unto them, Who has commanded you to build this house and to make up this wall? So when you get right in God, I'm going to say it over and over again. When you do right, it's just natural that opposition is going to show up, suffering. How do you know if you're a Christian? Is when, listen, when you do right, step out to do right, you get opposition. I'm giving the call, the question, when you get Christians that give Christians opposition about doing the Lord's work. Jesus said, and John, if you love me, you'll keep my words. That means you're going to do. Then said me, then send we unto them after this manner. We what are the names of the men that make this building? Well, they told them, and now they want to know, we want to know the names. But the eyes of their God was upon the elders of Jew the Jews that they could not cause them to cease to the matter came to Darius and they that returned answered by letter concerning this matter they couldn't stop them no matter what they were they they were pressing to the mark as Paul said to God looking to God and doing what God told them to do and they didn't care what these adversaries are saying this time they're not going to stop them so Haggai and Zechariah did a wonderful, great job of speaking to the Jews that even when the enemy comes, they're not fearing. They copied a letter of Tatini, governor on this side of the river, Euphrates, and Shadshidai Bazadai, and the companions that Aphrodites which were on this side of the river, sent unto Darius the king. Here they go with another mean, nasty letter. A petition. Petitions are nothing new. They're in the Bible. They want to do wrong. They want to do against the God of the Bible. Going up to the courts and the big courts about sodomy and all that. Oh, that, that's nothing new. Here's a bunch of, here's three groups of men here that want to go against the God of the Bible. 
There's always somebody against God and his people. Always. Until we get to eternity. Listen, even after a thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennium, of Jesus Christ, the twelve apostles, and every born again Christian that earns the right to reign, a thousand years of all that, and if you do wicked, you'll be told to go jump in the lake, the lake of fire. Even after that, that utopia, Satan is loose and he gathers up a fierce army to fight against God. There's always going to be an enemy. Then sent a letter unto him, wherein was written thus, Unto Darius the king all peace. Be it known unto the king that we went into the province of Judea, to the house of the great God. Those are the, the great God. You know what that tells you? They'll talk God, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But their talk don't back their walk. And behind your back, they'll write letters or do whatever they can to stop the work. In the name of God, of course. Listen, the Catholic Church has been doing it throughout years. You check Fox's Book of Martyrs. All the wars that they started. Which is built with great stone. And the timber is laid in the walls. And thus, and this work goes fast on and prospers in their hands. All right, great stones is true. Timbers laid in the walls is true. This work goes fast on. Well, I don't know. That may be a lie. Remember, remember when Satan talked to the Eve? Most of it was true. Only one little part was a lie. That fast on could be. He's trying to scare the king. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. we got no time to lose. They're going to build that place quick. Before you know it, it'll be done. So, I mean, that could be a lie. may not be. This work goes fast on and prospers in their hands. Well, that you know is true because they're doing it from God. And it may be fast work. They may be in a hurry <laughs> to hurry up and get it done. <coughs> then ask we those elders we said unto them thus who command you to build this house and to make up these walls now me in the flesh I turn around and say who are you to ask <laughs> who are you this is our land we've been sent by the king shut up <laughs> These are busybodies. They have nothing better to do than interfere with the work of God. Isn't there something about in the warning, even the New Testament, about busybodies? They're not helping the work. They're trying to destroy it. That we might write the names of the men that were the chief of them. Write them for what? What were you going to do with those names once you got them? You were going to write this letter anyway. You were going to put their names. I'm in a point right now in my life with, with the Lord. I've got to walk very carefully. I've got to walk the way that God wants me to walk and not the way of Satan. This is the way of Satan. To destruct the work. And thus they returned us an answer, saying, We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth. True. Joshua twenty four fifteen. And build a house that was builded these many years ago. True. Which a great king of Israel builded and set up. 
Now, what would stop you from thinking, mate, that these are the words of the adversaries and not the Jews? Wouldn't you think they'd give Solomon the credit, right? They wanted names. I'll give you some names. David Solomon. How about them for names? Or the Jews are just, like I said, just ignored them. And didn't give them no answer. Because they didn't deserve no answer. And if America does go down the sewer pot as we think it's going to happen, there are going to be government officials coming in, going this and that. It's like, you ain't worth my time. Just shut up and get out of my way. And the city persecutes you? What did Jesus tell his disciples? Shake off the dust off your feet and go into the next city. I'll take care of them. Nowhere does Jesus tell the disciples or the church is told to take up weapons and start fighting. Find me that verse. Now, if there's an immediate situation where my family needs to be protected, okay, right then and there. But you tell me where God, Jesus Christ, Paul told us to take up a weapon and fight the government. And if anybody would have said that, Peter and Paul would have had the great thing to say because they were under the worst. I don't know what kind of ruler you would call him. Killing us Christians, our brethren, left and right, right and left and up and down. But those two wrote, you give honor to honor to do, and you be power, you should be subject to the powers that be. These people here, the Jews, looks like, I'm not even paying attention to you. We're just going to go about our work. Shut up. You know the best way to win a fight? Shut up. I have a problem with that. Preachers have a problem with shutting up. We're always talking. Guy can't fight you if you shut up. And if you shut up, the more he speaks, the more he writes, he's writing lies. If you don't tell him nothing. But after that, our fathers had provoked the God of heaven into wrath. True. He gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the Chaldean. True. Notice how they're not covering up their history. Whoever is telling this, it is 100% true. I dare you to get an airplane, fly over anywhere in America, parachute down, walk to the nearest school with a blindfold, grab the nearest history book, and open it up and see if that history is true. I dare you. I dare you. I'll give you names to look up in the history of what they teach. Obadiah Holmes and John Clark, what do they teach about them? What do they teach about the pilgrims? What do they teach, teach about the Salem witch trials? I know the truth. I didn't get into schools. But I know the truth. You can't preach the truth about the Salem witch trials. A bunch of girls lied to to her teachers about a group of adults just to get their little fancy dancy because they didn't get their way. And a bunch of women died because a bunch of fancy dancy girls who need a spanking across their rear. But you can't preach that today because that's going on right in the schools right now. They know the history, and the history's correct. America does not know her history, and will never know the history. I can go on with that, but I won't. But in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Babylon, the same king Cyrus made a decree to build this house of God. True. We read that in Ezra 1. We read that in Second Chronicles. The last chapter, which I think is 36. 
Did you see what they did? They didn't read. They didn't name David. They didn't name Solomon. They named Nebuchadnezzar. That's the one that took us out of the land. Cyrus. You want a name? We'll give you a name. Cyrus. Go back and check that. That's a name. That's a king that made a law, and you cannot change the law. Go check the records. Go check history. That's what they're telling them. Imagine somebody in America today. Go check the history on those people. Wish, wash, panty, waste, anything else like that. But the truth. So there's a name, Cyrus. Check that name out. And the vessels also of gold and silver of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that was in Jerusalem, true, and brought them to the temple of Babylon, true. Thus did Cyrus the king take out of the temple of Babylon, true, and they were delivered unto one whose name was Sheshbaziah, there's your bazaar. True. Gave him a name. Go check Sheshbaziah. That's a name. Go check his name. He was given the command of all the stuff that was locked up in Babylon by Cyrus. Go check the name out. Leave us alone. Let's get an airplane parachute to any Baptist church in America and mention... John Clark or Obadiah Holmes and see if the pastor knows anything about those names. What about it? If you were to mention four names to any Christian in a church today, born again Christian, claims to be born again, which name would they be very familiar with? John Williams, John Clark, Obadiah Holmes, or uh, uh, I can't think of it. Billy Graham. Which name would they know? Oh, they know the one that defeated the cause of Christ, weren't they? Did they know Billy Sunday? You can't even look on the internet, peanut farmer started school, started preaching at the age of six year old. You cannot come up with the name Bob Jones Sr. How about that? I even did the search. And I put more in what I told Rachel to search in. And I couldn't find Bob Jones Sr. They kept coming up with Buck T President. I'm going to save the world on this. Oh, I think a Southern Baptist, but I'm anything but. Hey, brother, give me a beer. That's the name I kept coming up with. And they said unto him, Oh, yeah, whom he made governor. So Shiz Bazaar, whatever his name is. He wasn't just no panty ways. He was the governor. Go see him. <clears throat> you want names? We gave you names. They wanted the names of the Jews. So they can go back and, you know, persecute those Jews that did it. And, you know, they wanted Haggai, Haggai and they wanted... Uh, uh, Zachariah, so they could bring them on charges because they defiled the king's order in chapter 4. Rightly so, they would have been prosecuted for not obeying the law. But they gave them names. Names who the law says they can be there and names that they by the law can build. Look at that. That's wisdom. And said unto him, Take these vessels, go carry them into the temple that is in Jerusalem. True. Why would the king say, Take these vessels, go carry them to the temple that's in Jerusalem? 
when there is no temple in Jerusalem. Because the king is ordering for that place to be builded. Ha! Ah. Interesting. And let the house of God be builded in his place. So not just anywhere, but where it belongs. So they said, these are the names. Go check them out. This is the governor that was put in charge. And not only that, we are building in the very exact spot where the law told us, where Dyrus told us. So shut up. Go back and check it out. In the next chapter, they're going to, by the way. They want an investigation now. This is what they're asking for. How do you know we're in this day of Ezra? What are most of your TV programs? Investigative reports, or, you know, crime show, whatever, and forensics, and all this other stuff. And we got we got court TV. We want to know what the really was. He really guilty? Was he really innocent? We want to look at all the stuff. We want to investigate. We're in that form today. We're in it in America today. We want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Even if it's junk and lies, we still want to know. For how many years they've been praying, you know, Elvis and, and uh, Adolf Hitler have been having parties together. And they're idiots that believe that junk. These guys gave official names. Had they give their Jewish name, they would just put anything down they wanted to. Zachariah, oh, you won't believe what he did. Oh, Haggai, wow. They were brought it back. Wow, did they do all that? But you can't lie against Cyrus. <laughs> Go ahead, lie against him. I dare you to lie against a, 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 a median king. You can say goodbye to your head. All right. Then came the shame she's bizarre and laid the foundation of the house of God which is in Jerusalem. And since that time, even unto now, has it been in building, yet it is not finished. Well, there was a stop there for a while. Who didn't report the stoppage? They stopped. Last chapter, they stopped working. God sent Haggai and Zechariah in there to get back to work. You know what they want the king to think? They've been violating the law all ever since. They never listened to your law, king, that you did in chapter uh, 4. I don't know if I've been saying 5, but I'm going to say but chapter 4, they, the work is suspended. Verses 23 and 24. But they don't tell that in the letter. They make it look like, hey, they've been doing this work the whole time. Making them outlaws. So don't be surprised in your Christian walk that, yea, all they that live godly shall serve from persecution. Don't be shocked if they lie about you. Because they are of their father, Satan. And John 8, 44 says that he is the liar and the father of it. So when somebody says they're a Christian, comes up and lies on your behalf, James says, wherefore their fruits, their works, the Roman Catholic Church says they're Christians, ask any news media. If you're in some place where there's a TV and all of a sudden the media says Christians, turn it off right away. And ask everybody that's in the room, well, who do you think they're talking about? I guarantee 95% of them will say, oh, the church, Catholic Church. How did they get that title? They're the ones that killed the Christians. you got to be careful with words. And... Now, therefore, if it seemed good to the king, oh, look, if it seemed good to you, butter him up, stick him in the oven, 
320 for a half hour. I try to cook them. Butter them up. Be careful when anybody try to butter you up. Oh, you're just so nice. You're just such a great. Shut up. I love all the times when I went to go buy a car at a, at a car play, and they just, you know, I had one guy, he looked at the bumper stickers on the car. Oh, I'm a cri No, you're not. You're just trying to say that to get me to buy one of your cars. You know, oh, we got this wonderful warranty. Like, I told one guy, wait a minute, you got a warranty? Yeah, wonderful warranty. From bumper to bumper, I said, it's, it's, it's a good car, right? He goes, yeah. Then why would you need a warranty? If it's such a good car, why are you warranting a good car? Be careful if people try to butter you up to get your money or get whatever they want out of you. Let there be search made in the king's treasure house. That tells you where the, where the scrolls were kept. Those scrolls were considered treasure. They were valuable information. Or maybe just these reports of God's people and God's building was a treasure. Which is there at Babylon. Well, Babylon was conquered, destroyed. So these records are kept. Whether it be so. That a decree was made of Cyrus the king to build this house of God at Jerusalem. And let the king send his pleasure to us concerning this matter. Now, these people don't think they're, they think the Jews are lying. They don't think there was ever a decree made. So they're like, go ahead and check it out, but you ain't going to find them. And we'll find out in chapter 6 what happens. Chapter 6 will tell you why God said, Unto another commandment shall be given from me. God knows it all from the beginning to the end. When we learn from this lesson here, you need just to shut up and do your work. You don't need to defend it if God wants you to do it. There are certain things right now going on. If you guys are questioned, we're not interested. That's why we're not doing it. You don't need to go into all the details and everything about, you know, this is wrong. No, you just, we're not interested. Then shut up. We're doing this. Because, no, shut up. We do what we do, and that's it. Our testimony is to keep on doing what God wanted to do. We're not going to destroy someone else's work. Because if we just try to destruct someone else's work, then we're no better than the adversaries of the Jews here. You say, well, their work is, I don't care. That's, good. That's between them and God. And how we treat other people when it comes time to our opposition, God will maybe show us a little grace and mercy if we show grace and mercy. By the way, if anybody comes to you two, I'm the speaker in this house. They come to me. Especially with events that may be happening later down the road. But... You're always going to have an adversary. We're going to see it. We're going to see it in Nehemiah. You're going to see it. Even Jesus Christ, who is God of all, had adversaries. And if Jesus had an adversary, what do you think you're going to get? Hot cakes and sausage? Hot cup of coffee? Orange juice handed to you every day for free? No. That's that.